Hey, Composing Gloves here, and today we're going to be going over the articulator settings inside of Slicex. So, this could get a little complicated if you've never looked at this sort of stuff before, but we're going to make it really simple for you. And we also have region settings that we're, we'll be taking a look at. So, I have a sample loaded up, and I made two uh, slice chops to make things as simple as possible. So, when I hit the first one, it'll play that, that sample. And when I hit the second one, it'll play that. And... I have to be holding down the key to have it continue to play. So that's an important note. Okay, so we see here that uh, we have some region settings. And if we click on this little region icon, we have the ability to delete, clone as a region, all these all these different settings here. And uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let you mess with those because they're pretty self-explanatory. One that's cool is you can go into purpose and you can do like things that are relevant to CD, CD track, CD index. So kind of cool stuff. The most I ever use in here is beat and downbeat. So, or basic, that one too. So, okay, we're able to select our regions here or we could just simply play it and it will select it for us. And we have the ability to, let's say that we have one sample chop that we want to process differently than the others. We'd like to maybe compress one and leave all the other stuff out of it. Well, we can do that by changing the out so I have Slicex right at the channel one. If I play it, we see it comes out one, but I can make it so that it comes out uh, one here. What does this mean? Well, it's gonna add this number to that number. So this is gonna actually come out insert two. As you see, I can make it come out insert three, so on and so forth. So you're able to individually route your channels out. So I could have one coming out there and I could have two coming out there. So if you play them at the same time, Oh, I can't play them at the same time. This brings us to our next setting, which we'll get to in just a sec, but you see how they're both playing at the same time out separate channels. So that is a pretty cool way of messing with things. You can also use negative channels, and that's because if you're on like mixer track 10 and you go negative one, well, then it'll come out mixer track nine, so on and so forth. So, okay, cool. Now you just saw that I could not play both samples at the same time. That's because of the cut group. So the way the cut group works is any other sample or region, any other region that's in the same cut group, it will cut the other sample. So if this sample is playing and I play this one, because they're both in cut group one, the this sample will cut out that sample. So in a drum kit, for example, if I'm playing an open hi-hat and then I all of a sudden uh, want to play a closed hi-hat, I can't do both at the same time. It's physically impossible. So in order to simulate this, we can do that with our samples. So we can put them in cut groups and cut one off in response to the other. Pretty cool. Next up, we have a whole bunch of knobs here. We have amp, filter, speed, and start. On the first one, this controls our panning. So left, right, and then we have a volume knob so we can cut or boost. And then we have these articulation. That's what this stands for, articulation. And so we're going to come back to these. Well, let's talk about them right now. So we have eight articulators. You see we have articulator, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Each articulator can have a different setting for each one of these controls over here. So articulator one has a unique envelope for the volume. Articulator two has a different one. Articulator three, you know, could be different than articulator two and articulator one. And so on and so forth. This applies uh, through all these settings, right? So we could set this region to a particular articulator envelope. I highly doubt you're going to need more than eight, which is why they... <coughs> Whoa! That's why they gave you eight, right? So... Okay, cool. Now let's go into what these mean then. So on right now we're on marker two or region two and we can uh, set it so that, oh, instead of the articulator being the being sensitive, the amp, so this is the panning and volume, we can make panning and volume. So these two guys be on articulator two instead and we can give them a percentage of importance. So right now they have a 100% uh, effect. So the minimum and the maximum are 100%. We could scale it down like 50% or whatever it is. So that's what those do. We can do this for the filters. So that would be the cutoff and resonance, the speed and the start time. So that covers all the top tabs and then all these are bottom controlling sources. So naturally those will follow with the articulator. That's why we would change the articulator. So let's say that I want marker one to have a volume envelope of, so we're on articulator one on marker one and we want the volume envelope to become active so we click active and then we want it to be zero so oh i changed the panning my bad but anyways you get the idea oh we have panning out the left side so let's say that on marker two you see how it's coming out the left maybe i want it to come out the right 
So I'm going to change it to Articulator 2. So now uh, this envelope will affect it. I'm going to turn on 2 and I'm going to pan it up or pan it right. It's a, it went up. You know what I mean? So now this one comes out the left. This one comes out the right. I've individually affected them here. So this could be a really, really cool thing. You get really dense with this. I prefer to um, not get dense. I'm turning off Articulator 1 and 2 envelopes so that we can listen to them the way they were intended to be listened to. And okay, cool. So that's how you would control those things. We'll get into these settings here a little bit more in a sec. We can also do so with the filter. So we have a cutoff and resonance knob. And it's just a little confusing because they haven't named them, but it sort of makes sense the order they're in. And you can also do percentage so that that controls these guys. We have the speed, meaning speed of playback. And so we can also, as you see here, this actually changes the pitch. So if we go up, so pretty cool. And we're going to talk about a special mode with that guy too. And then we have our start and sample start and delay. Oh, we have a delay setting. I never really touched this knob. So, but apparently you can introduce a delay and they also have the articulator settings. Okay, cool. I'm going to assume you know filters, sound and synth basics if you don't know filters. So you have your filters. You have times one, times two, times three. I'm assuming these are equivalent to poles. So six, 12, and 18, but I can't say that for sure. And we have an off switch. So if you're going to use these, make sure they're on. We have a low pass, band pass, band stop, and high pass. So pretty cool. Okay, so to demonstrate some of the settings over here, if you're brand new to these things, they might be a little bit confusing. I'm assuming you know already what these things control, like panning, velocity, cutoff, volume, cutoff. And I cover what all these envelopes do and how they work in way more detail in the Harmer from the Ground Up series. They're the same thing. So you can go check out that if you want more information. But I just really quick want to demonstrate what these knobs at the bottom do. So we know that from the Sound and Synth Basic series that a top value means uh, a high value. So in... Let's turn off the cutoff and go to volume. So in volume, this is volume loud, right? A one. And then down here, this is no volume, zero. And as we move this, we're changing over time how our volume is behaving. So if we, we can make this go very short. So volume and then it decays very quickly. Well, you have these options here to move these guys. They don't have any effect though until you've defined something. So uh, what we could do is we could put a point in, right click and make it a decay point. Now what's going to happen is this length of time here is going to be affected by this. As you see, as I move it, it changes, but it only momentarily shows you this. Why do they do that? Well, it's so you can automate it. it it's, it's a programming reason because making the actual graph move is ridiculous. So what we're going to do so that's why that's there so you can change the values by automating them but they have to have something they're relevant to in order for this to work you can also open up state files and there's a couple special ones and i got to that menu by clicking this little down arrow right here it's a little hidden they also have an undo button specifically for this so if you want to undo things in here you'd hit that undo button but we could open the state file and you can go to like volume sustain and this also has a unique property in that when you hit it It'll, no matter, even if you hit your key short, it will continue to sustain. You can see the envelope they've configured to do that, if you're wondering about that. You also have an ADSR, which will allow you to do that. And then they also have some scratching envelopes. We'll take a look at those here in just a sec. So you see that there are a couple settings. Honestly, if you really want to get the hang of this, watching a video is great, but you just need to go in and mess with it. And then you'll get questions and figure things out. So I encourage you to just mess with this. Um, the same thing goes for the LFO. I'm going to redirect you to the Harmer series on this one because it covers what Temple and Global and Undo and all these bottom settings do. There's just a lot of little settings in this sort of stuff. Velocity sensitivity is, of course, this is, now let's, uh, so in volume, this makes a lot of sense with volume. Let's do something a little more abstract. Let's do panning. And you notice there's no on setting. There's just a default setting. So right now, the velocity sensitivity, velocity has nothing to do with this. Now we're going to make it have something to do with it. So we've moved it. So as we hit key softer, we know that on panning, when this is down, this means come out the left side. When it's up, come out the right. So if I hit keys hard, meaning a high velocity, they will come out the right side. If I hit them soft, they'll come out the left. So I hit it soft. So you see they're, they're coming out the, the left. And if I hit it hard, they come out the right. So that's really, really handy dandy. So anyways, that's what velocity sensitivity does. To reset it, just drag it back to its zero value, and now it'll play back regular-like. And we have mod X, mod Y. So you could take these settings and link them up to the knobs up there by simply dragging. 
So right now we've said, oh, when the value is very low, um, pan it out the left. So we're going to, when the value, I hope I said value. So as I move this to a lower value, and you can actually see this line represented. You see I can, so I could automate this if I wanted to and hook up a whole bunch of other things. But what's neat about this is I could say when the value's low, come out the left. But if I pan it just a little, then come out the, come out, uh, the right. And I could maybe do some weird stuff so that at various values, I get various panning. And you can get some really weird effects. So that's pretty cool. Now, if you need to delete a bunch of points at the same time, hit the pencil tool and just right click. It's better. And what we're going to do is just reset this. And OK. So that's mod X. You can set up something for mod Y. So when you move up and down, it controls something. So panning, volume, you control the filter cutoff, a whole bunch of just really dynamic things. And then uh, we have randomization. So let's do randomization with the filter cutoff because it's pretty easy to hear. Okay, so we see here that we have a straight line. This is the most complicated one. So at a straight line in the zero value, we will have no change. And you see it's pretty much consistent. And now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna move this up. What is this gonna do? Well, as I have higher values in the cutoff, they will become progressively more random, meaning this value will be given a, a randomness to it. That wasn't helpful at all. Check it out. So you can hear now that it's quite variable. What if I want to make it more extreme? Well, I could do something like that. And you see it's changing the value. So occasionally it's going to change values to be much lower and then it'll choose values to be higher. So if I have something like this, see how we get sudden values? That's because of this line right here. So the chance of it getting any of these middle values has gone down and it's got a lot higher chance to select lower values and just straight up higher values. So that is how that works. And so these are just the percentage of chance that it's going to select that value. And they actually show you the percentages up here if you want to know. But I generally will only look at it in those general sort of things. I mean, you're coming in here to be random, not specific. So, okay, cool. So that's how the randomization works. You can do it with any of them. It's a really cool way to introduce small nuances in your sound. It's never quite the same. So I recommend doing like small things like, oh, let's do that. Like, you know, just tiny stuff. Or maybe you want to go down if you want to go down. That's another important thing. Just keep your direction in mind. Or maybe you don't care. You do something like this. Like, who knows? Okay, so now let's move over. So we've gone over the random. So let's cover this start thing. So what happens is we've already talked about this in the macro setting. But this is going to scroll through the first 100 milliseconds of our sound. This sound, I don't anticipate too much change. But what happens is, is we move this up. We see that our offset has changed here. You see how it's only triggering from right there now? And if we move it, we change that. So we're able to drastically change where in the sample we start from. So that's really nice. It's also a really nice visual. Okay, cool. And so we're able to, if we want, we can come in here and change it so that it starts, it will start from the whole length. So these values have suddenly got a lot more value to them. And this starts at the end of the sample, so nothing happens. So you want to be aware of what it is you're controlling and what your setting is in here. But that's what that controls. So this could be a really useful thing to perhaps randomize a little bit. You'll get variable start times and have some really cool different percussive sounds come out of there. Let's move over to the speed. Okay, so the speed. This guy is a tricky one. So you would think intuitively this is the way I saw it at least, that when you have your speed on and you hook it up to mod X, this will be slower and this will be faster, right? But nope, it's the same all the way across the board. You might be going, what am I doing wrong? And the question, the answer to your question is you have to have an envelope on. So this is actually a special envelope. You'll notice that's not the same for any of the others. If you go into the, into the open state file section, You'll have these, you have this, um, where is it? Speed, basic scratching. So we're going to make a scratch sort of envelope here. So if you open up that state file, it'll pop open this envelope. So if you want to configure it yourself, you can, but they have a thing for you. Also, I cover all of these settings, if you're wondering, also inside the Harmer and perhaps the Citrus from the ground up as well. So if I turn this on, what I've just done is I've, I've put an envelope on the speed. And you can hear it getting scratchy what we can now do is we can control this envelope with this uh, va with values and so now our mod x has been linked to control values that will be fed to the envelope 
and it works in a percentage fashion. And so a 25%, I believe, is reverse. And then a higher. And then that's just straight up going forward. And what we're doing is we're triggering, we're giving this thing different values to change the speed by. So that is a pretty handy deal. So if you want to do live scratching or whatever, you can hook up a knob to this and get, get funky. So pretty cool. And that's pretty much it. That's this area. Now, I, I realize that this is probably a little overwhelming if you're brand new at this. But just give it a go. Mess with some settings. Come back. Watch it again if you need to. Remember, you have eight of these. So you can assign different regions to do things. And the other question is, okay, these are what they all do technically. How do I get creative with it? Just throw a drum loop in a song and try making some dynamic ways to make it sound naturally variable. Try using the randomization parameter to vary the cutoff and maybe the start point by just a little bit. So it never sounds quite the same way twice. Make it sound a little more organic. Try doing things like that. And you'll find yourself using this in ways you never thought possible before. So if you have any questions, let me know. Subscribe and have a blessed day.